cannot win. I have saved Gotham. What are you waiting for? Come on! The what? We all know your fate. Every decision you've ever made ends with death and misery. People die. I stop you. You'll just break out and do it again. <laughs> you can't. Hundreds will be killed. I need your help to stop the attack. Batman can't let all these people die. Don't do this, Alfred. Batman must save Gotham. I'm sorry, but deep down, you know I'm right. You want to know something funny? Even after everything you've done, I would have saved you. <laughs> that actually is... Pretty funny! <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to a sack of potatoes. Last time on this channel we talked about Arkham Asylum and its massive impact. Not only was it an awesome game, but it became Game of the Year and gave Rec Rocksteady a lot of credibility, leading to them developing the second installment of the trilogy, Arkham City. Are you playing the most important and acclaimed part of the franchise? I mean, I did a poll on the channel asking what people's favorite Arkham game was, and City won. Granted, only three people voted, and two of them voted for no specific game, but whatever. Maybe I'd get more reliable info if you subscribe. Anyway, point is, the game is very important to many people, and I was very excited to replay it for this video. I mean, I've always loved this game. So now let's take a look at what made Arkham City such an important game. Welcome to an Arkham Retrospective, Episode 2, Arkham City. Arkham City came out in 2011 and was met with much acclaim both by normal people and the nerds we call reviewers. I mean, it still stands as the highest reviewed Arkham game and the 55th highest rated game on Metacritic, right under Madden NFL 2002. So naturally the game did a lot to beat what Asylum had done and go far beyond its constraints. So why exactly is it so good? Chapter 1. What makes a sequel? Sequels have it rough, man. There, there's a reason why many sequels get lower views and scores than the originals. I mean, how do you take an original movie or game in this case and then continue it while not only respecting the original but also going above and beyond what it was? People get tired of sequels that are just the same with a fresh coat of paint. Look at FIFA. Unfair comparison, I know, I'm sorry. But it, it's the fact that every year they just reuse the code with slightly newer visuals and call it a day. It's, it's lazy. A more fair example would be, in the case of movies, Home Alone. Listen, I don't know if these movies have a very active fandom or not, but the original and its sequel, Lost in New York, are essentially the same movie, only basically in a different setting. And one features the orange man. But here's the thing, despite being the same thing, guess which one got a higher review score? Point is, sequels need to go above what the original did, and Arkham City did it in so many different ways, namely, well, the original was very condensed, and like I said in my first video, very almost metroidvania-like. 90% of Asylum is spent in closed, confined areas such as the mansion. Meanwhile, Arkham City greatly just ditched the metroidvania shtick, and in its place gave players a small open world to explore as Batman grappling through the roofs of Gotham City for the first time. On the one hand, well, that, that's fucking awesome. I, I, you know, like I can't really argument as to why it's cool. It's just awesome to fly around as Batman freely. On the other hand, they had to find a way to make traversal not boring, which is something that many open world games struggle with. The solution was, well, A, the map is really not that big, it appears huge, but it's, it's not, it's very condensed too and it's really easy to travel. And the dive bomb mechanic lets you gain both speed and height to cut down on your traveling time. Uh, There's a little pro tip right here. At the start of the game, as soon as you can, do the AR glide missions. Not because they're particularly fun, it's just Superman 64 flying through hoops, but because they give you the grapnel boost. And this just lets you fly off of a grapple, which is just more speed you can build upon, rather than climbing, waddling to the edge, and then dive bombing again. It's, 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 it just cuts down on your time. Secondly, they made sure that, for the most part, it's not just empty space. There's plenty to do in, in Arkham City, such as... Chapter 2. 
side quests. Like I said before, the original Arkham Asylum was very linear in its gameplay. The only semi-side quest was Riddler trophies, and those weren't really much to talk about. They just appear while you go on your way, and you can collect them easily. Arkham City has a slew of different side quests to talk about. I'll, I'll, I'll quickly go over each one real fast. Like, side note, I played the Game of the Year edition for this video, which has some differences. Namely, you get to play as Catwoman, as, and as a side quest, it, it's whatever. You get an underwhelming encounter with Two-Face, and then just hunt down certain goons on the street as well as get your own specific collectibles. That's kind of it. It's, it's a bit under underwhelming, sure, but I guess it's nice to play as Catwoman. First up, Acts of Violence. It's a side quest where you must save certain political prisoners that periodically and randomly appear on the street. Just bit, beat the hell out of one guy and that's it. I, I didn't know this counted as a side quest only and kind of bugged me because it counted for completion, but it's harmless enough, I guess. Bane returns in a side quest where you gotta find these tankers with Titan and destroy them. There's just six of them and most of them can be found just by going through the main story, just sort of around. I like this one, it just sort of happens in the background normally, and it's neat. I do dislike the ending though, because again, it's underwhelming. You fight some goons alongside Bane, who has low blood sugar and just stands there for half the time, and then just, you put him behind bars. Not even like a pseudo boss fight or anything, which kind of left, you know, a bad taste in my mouth, because again, it's Bane. But I can leave. I, I, I can live with it. Speaking of people that made a return from Asylum, Victor Sass has a randomized event where you hear a phone, pick up the phone, and then you have to fly halfway through the map to pick up another phone to track him down. All around, it's okay, it's a nice time. You know, you have a time limit for movement and getting through the city, and it's neat. And the ending where you sneak around Sass's lair and take him down, it's a, it's a really nice piece of set design. Nora Freeze and Mr. Freeze are a two minute side quest where you track Nora down and find her within a minute, honestly, it's very obvious where she is, and then beat up some guys. Fun as the fight may be, it's still too simple, honestly, it's whatever. Hush makes its Arkham debut in a side quest where Oracle first tells you to go and investigate a murder which creates the whole mystery around Hush, which is really neat. And after this, Batman has to look out for other victims around the city to track him down. If you don't find them, however, Oracle will just tell you where they are eventually. It, it takes a long time for that, trust me, you don't want to know. Typically, the game wants you to find them somewhere on the ground, mainly in like alleyways while traversing the city. If you're looking at the footage right now, one flaw becomes obvious. I don't fucking touch the ground! So I couldn't find the last victim until Oracle told me where to look. At least the ending builds towards him returning in Arkham Knight, but by itself, it's fe it feels like a cop-out, you know? There's a couple of side missions similar to this one, namely Deadshot, where you find those victims and track him down. I don't know if it's randomized, but at least with his victims, Oracle kindly told me faster where they were. So I didn't wait a year to finish the mission. However, the ending of Deadshot's mission is so goddamn awful. I mean, look at this. Side note, I was watching a Jacksepticeye video and it lined up perfectly. Think you can get to me? What? Many have tried. None have managed it. It would serve you to stop talking. Right? Where have you gone? Hey, fellas! What's up? <laughs> These wolves are kind of sick! Oh, don't hit that. Wait, that was it? Best assassin in the world, my fucking ass. Also similar similar to Hush is Azrael's mission, where you have to find him around town and go talk to him like five times, I think. This one I actually like, just because he's just sort of there in the highest points in Arkham City staring at you. And it's, it's cool to just turn around and suddenly see him. And the fact that he's not on the fucking ground makes him easier to spot him. Furthermore, you can deduce the general vicinities of where he's at just because it covers like four quadrants of the map. I also take this moment to say that most of the footage, some of the footage I got, like three hours worth, are just corrupted, including the final parts where I beat Azrael's uh, side quest and Riddler. Overall, uh, recording this game was pain in my ass because OBS didn't uh, like pick up on it, just a fuck side tangent because I was really annoyed by it, but yeah. Finally, Mad Hatter. He's fun. He just sort of comes out of nowhere, tricks you, and then you see the most horror Batman ever, and get a quick goon beat down with him cursing you. It, it's short, it's sweet, honestly, it works. And that's it for side quests. Yep, I'm not skipping anything or anyone for any particular reason. I think if something's clear is that this is a real mixed bag with a lot of tedium, but negative as I may be, they do their job of adding stuff that you can do while getting from point A to point B as well as just adding more life to Arkham City, so it's alright. However, I don't think that that's the big change Arkham City had. Chapter 3, The Great Story. See, I think the biggest change the game had was that it made a more engaging story. Now, that may not sound like much, but it genuinely fundamentally changes a lot in how the player, at least myself, I, I can't speak forever, interacts with the game. 
Playing Asylum and City back to back made it very clear how Asylum really doesn't have much in the way of story. It's just a little explanation, a reason as to what you're doing. Honestly, the bigger flaws of that plot is the fact that on the one hand, it's it's just not engaging because 99% of the time it's just Batman fucking walking around alone and then reaching a place, deducing some detective shit and then walking to another place. A good story in a video game should be engaging, it should give you a reason to want to keep going. See, and the reason Arkham Asylum in particular failed at this was because for half of it, after you rescue Gordon, there is no sense of ur urgency or pending doom to really drive you. It's not like Joker has hostages or bombs in the city and, well, this, this, this will sound a bit fucked up, but... By that point, basically the entire Arkham staff has been turned into past tense. Arkham City clearly saw this problem and doubled down. In case you don't know, Arkham City starts off with Bruce Wayne being tossed into Arkham City, a part of Gotham that has been fenced in as a sort of pseudo-prison. This is obviously a fucking awful idea, but oh well. It starts simple enough, and then shit hits the fan. Oh, you want motivation? Fucking Batman is poisoned, and so are countless people in Gotham. Go. What's that, not good enough? Strange is slowly building towards fucking murdering all of the inmates in Arkham City and leveling that part of town. These plot points genuinely help build suspense and keep the drive going to see just what the hell happens next. Scenes of Batman stumbling over sickly drive this, and especially the scene after Joker kidnaps Talia where you go out and see that Strange has activated Protocol 10, it's... oof, it's, it's impactful. I also like that they brought a lot of fresh faces to the sequel, like uh, Hugo Strange, Rachel Ghoul, and the League of Assassins, Mr. Freeze, just really good picks for villains in the century. Furthermore, they gave Batman a lot more character, from him struggling and questioning himself at the end and, and breaking after Joker dies, or his relationship with Talia and how he wants to go straight to her but he knows he can't let thousands of people die because of Strange. It's just, it's just really engaging and makes you want to beat the game quickly to see each twi twist and turn. One thing I complain about is Joker. Listen, okay, his ending is fucking fantastic, genuinely phenomenal. And the twist with him is perfectly built up and delivered. My problem is with Batman media in general, they feel the need to constantly fall back on Joker and not trust his other villains, and it feels like this game sort of fell back on that because it seems they didn't trust Strange enough to, you know, have enough presence to carry the entire crux of the story, and this meant the game basically had two different climaxes. First in Wonder Tower where you go and beat Strange, and second in the movie theater with the final boss and Joker's ending. And I can forgive everything, just for that scene of Batman carrying Joker's body out of Arkham City and then just somberly walking away, it's, it, it's pitch perfect. But honestly, considering the fact that they had to juggle two different plot points, it, it came out really well. At least in the main game. See, my version of the game includes the Catwoman DLC, and this is certain gameplay segments spliced in between the main story. At first I thought, well, oh, neat, I, I get to play as Catwoman, that's kinda cool. She plays similar enough to Batman where it's easy to adapt and distinct enough where she actually adds something and changes the gameplay up. It's only a shame you only get to play her like three times total. It lasts for like 15 minutes minus the endgame content. But the worst sin is the fact that she cuts the story up in horrible ways. Okay, she opens the game, which is fine, like that's cool. Then, like, after Batman gets kidnapped and poisoned by Joker, and then finally, after Batman is nearly killed and is knocked out while Strange is executing Protocol 10. I don't think I need to explain why this is fucking awful for the pacing. It's, it's, it's like edging, dude. You're reaching something huge, everything is going down, and then the game goes, nah, cat. Also, very small side note, I'm not crazy about the character design for female characters in Asylum and City. I feel like they're overly sexualized and it kind of detracts from the designs. Like, like sure, they can be attractive, whatever, that's fine, but you're pushing it up to- now, I've been talking about how City expanded Asylum, but I've neglected the most important part in a video game. Chapter 4, Gameplay. Okay, so in terms of gameplay, it's really close to Asylum, just smoother. For example, the combat sections just flow better, the stun is more useful, new enemy types that actually force you to plan ahead and not just press one extra button, new gadgets, and more importantly, more combo power-ups. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's the same game, just straight up better and less mind-numbing. All around really good stuff. And this is applicable across the board to most of the gameplay in Arkham City. It's it's Asylum, but smoother and more enjoyable. Very small, almost unnoticeable fixes like grappling in midair or while running help just make it all flow better. It's imperceptible changes that just add on and make it so good. If anything, Predator sections are the least changed part of the game, but they still got some cool additions such as signal jammers that block your vision or mines. I hate the mines. As well as just new gadgets and special takedowns, and the knockout smash. Dude, in the middle of a silent takedown you can cancel it into a knockout smash. This instantly disabling the enemy but making noise. Good for when you're caught, 
you can just BAM and run away. Instead of awkwardly, you know, sorta of, kinda, of, you know, choking a guy out while three dudes drill you with bullets, it, it, it's fucking stupid. However, it is a shame that they that they removed the way in which like thugs used to get scared to the point where they'd be like trembling and, and, and shooting at ghosts, like panicking. That was really cool back in Asylum. But it's just a, a small thing. Also, it's really cool how they took one of the worst parts of Asylum, the Titan Goons, and blended them much better into the combat style of Arkham, actually requiring you to, you know, stun them instead of just waiting and throwing a bat ring. And then they proceeded to use them twice in the whole game, but let's not worry about that. My only real complaint here is... Oh wait, two complaints actually, is that A, grappling onto ledges stresses me out, because sometimes Bats will just pull himself up when I don't want him to, leading to not good moments. And they had this figured out perfectly in Asylum, just, you know, hold A when you want to go up and don't when you're gonna, like, hang around, it's not that tough. And secondly, I feel like making the game that much smoother indirectly also made it way easier, even than Asylum. And it doesn't push you at all with any really hard encounters outside of, like, Joker's Funhouse. This isn't helped either by the fact that for some reason they removed difficulty options entirely until you reach New Game Plus, which in essence acts like the harder mode of the game. And it's a really good time, I wish they just let me choose it right off the bat because it's really fun. Yep, those are my only real gripes with the gameplay of this game, I'm not holding anything back though, what are you talking about? <laughs> I have no idea what you're referring to, um, anyway, boss fights. Chapter 5. I, I was very negative on the boss fights in Arkham Asylum, but Arkham City had the kindness of giving us more in terms of boss fights. Well, I mean, like I said, that shot is pathetic and a goddamn waste of time. But on the other hand, the rest are pretty good. Solomon Grundy, born on a Monday, is a really great introduction boss, getting new players used to their options in battle and veteran players introduced to the quickfire gel. It's just a really good, like, funnel into the rest of the game. Ray Shal Ghoul did something that no other boss fight managed to do and was using normal enemies effectively. Mainly because the ninjas are just fun to fight, and the simplicity of one hit killing them is good. Also, the part where they jump you and you have to mash counter is always tense. What a great boss fight. I mean, what do you want me to say about Clayface? It's a genuinely brilliant twist that shocks you and then follows up with an action-packed boss fight. You gotta spam freeze grenades at him, and then get an opportunity to strike. A boss fight where you have to spam a projectile, then attack. That sound familiar to anyone? Well, unlike Poison Ivy, it's actually fun. Helped a lot by the fact that Clayface actually has many different attacks and forces you to counter, dodge, and attack at certain intervals without becoming mind a mind-numbing bog like Ivy. Also, Batman with a sword. I mean, that's that's just cool, you know? Finally, the greatest ever, Mr. Freeze. This is almost unanimously regarded as the best boss fight, not just in this game, but in the franchise as a whole. And here's why, it actually managed to blend normal gameplay with a boss encounter. In this case, stealth encounters. Asking the player to constantly evolve their strategies to outsmart Mr. Freeze. He learns how you take him down and prevents it the next time around. You hide in a corner, he is ready for you at every corner from now on. You drop from him, he freezes ledges so you can't drop in on him again. It's really good. In New Game Plus, this fight is such a joy because it has you there racking your brain about how you could possibly take him down next. Awesome boss fight, just 10 out of 10. Oh, also I guess two faces here. And yep, that's every single boss-like encounter featuring a major villain from Batman's history. That concludes every- Chapter 6. Riddler. Shit sucks. Listen, okay, in, in my Asylum video I said Riddler trophies were neat and fun because they were mainly just there in the way and you could just sort of get them as you went through and keep going. In Arkham City they're all over the fucking place, many parts of the map that you don't even touch otherwise. And sure, it's easy to see while flying around because you know it's a fucking giant green goddamn question mark, but there's a big chance that the trophy is unattainable because you don't have one or two items made, meaning you can see them, mark them, and fuck off. Granted, there's trophies that are just there chilling, you know, and thank god they added Riddler thugs that you can interrogate to give you locations. However, there is no fucking worse feeling than accidentally knocking out the guy that you had to interrogate, losing the opportunity entirely. Okay, maybe there's a couple of worse feelings, but you get the point. But at the end, I was missing certain Riddler trophies and the goons just didn't want to fucking spawn. Leaving me aimlessly walking around like a nerd. And I am not a nerd! I have approximately 10 hours worth of endgame footage. I got after being the game, and I guarantee you a good 80% of it is just me getting rid of the trophies. It gets so tedious, especially when you have to go back to the indoor sections and fucking walk all the way through for like three Riddler trophies that you missed. It, it sucks. Hey guys, editing me here. Uh, I forgot to mention Riddler rooms, which are a lot more fun, certainly. But you gotta realize that it's like a five minute break in a 10 hour ordeal, so it's not that good anyway. By the time I finished the main story, I had collected somewhere around 90 to 100 Riddler trophies. 
which certainly that doesn't sound horrible until you realize there's 440 of the damn things. Then when you actually get them, all the encounter with Nigma is you just fucking sneak around for 30 seconds and take him down. It sucks, all of it fucking sucks. Oh my god, granted, I still was able to splice it with normal side quests for basically 10 hours, but that's not a good thing. It was basically me mindlessly gathering Riddler trophies until Oracle gave me a hush location, or maybe saw Asriel. It's categorically not worth it to get all 440 Riddler trophies. It is not fun. Sure, some puzzles are neat, and the fact that they added little gameplay combat encounters, which I highly recommend you check out right at the start so you get them progressively, that's cool, that's a good addition, but most of them are mind-numbing. So please, if you want to play Arkham City, do yourself a favor and steer clear of any shiny green question marks. Oh, also, I forgot about Harley Quinn's Revenge and have to put it in the script somewhere, so... Well, uh... Harley Quinn's Revenge is a DLC episode for Arkham City set after the events of the game in which Robin tracks down Harley who has kidnapped Batman in the Steel Mill. It is really cool that they designed Robin for this game with his own gadgets and playstyle distinct from Batman. Genuinely, he is cool. Although I wish he wasn't bald. That, that, that's, just, that's just wrong. Why is he bald? And I wish I could have played as him for more than 16 minutes, trust me, I counted every minute. To add insult to injury, you play as Batman for around 27 minutes in the same DLC, so what's, what's the point? Plus, I glitched out of bounds trying to do a grapnel takedown and that just soured the experience more for me. I'm being too harsh on Harley Quinn's Revenge, it's fine, it's whatever, I guess it has some cool fights, as redundant as Robin may be. But yeah, it's okay. Okay, that's that's enough complaining. I, I want to end on a high note. I genuinely love the villains in this game. What are you what are you doing here? Not you. Get out of here. But like, I mean, Hugo Strange, Rachel Ghoul, and Mr. Freeze are all excellent and steal the limelight. Hugo Strange has such a giant presence in how he can rival Batman in wits and torture him mentally, knowing all his faults. Or how Rachel Ghoul challenges him in a more physical way while also being a deranged menace to society. And I mean, Joker's Joker. What do you want me to say? I would argue Mark Hamill gives his best performance as Joker, period, in Arkham City. Listen, he bounces off of Kevin Conroy's Batman so good, and all the villains just group up and push Batman to his very limits, and it's very satisfying because of that to actually watch Batman rise to the challenge and beat them all. And that's it. That's all I have to say, really. Uh, you should totally play Arkham City, it's a masterpiece. As much as I complain a lot, it's a masterpiece. Honestly, even after all this time, it holds up brilliantly. Just stay clear of any men in green spandex. Honestly, what the fuck is that guy's problem? Jesus. This closes the chapter of my Arkham City retrospective and leaves just one final game. As much as sequels do have it rough, I would say in a franchise, the hardest part is the closing act. So I will see you all soon in Arkham Knight. Thanks for watching. <laughs>